Have you ever seen someone from a long way off and gone, that person is a Christian for sure, right? Like, I think there are some things that you see, and I remember growing up uh, in like elementary school, we had all these shirts that looked like popular brand logos, but the language was changed enough that it was like this kind of cringy Christianese thing. Like I remember I used to have a spirit, it looked like the Sprite logo and it was like lemon and lime on it, but it actually it said spirit rather than Sprite. And if you just bared a passing glance at it, you didn't realize it said spirit, you just assumed that's the Sprite logo. But then if you did your due diligence and you read the full word, you saw it said spirit. And then in the, where it would say like lemon and lime and refreshes your body, it would say like, it is the refreshment of your soul. And it was like, you they took all these secular concepts and we were trying to like, kind of hijack them and use them for what you're trying to do. And we were like, that's that's how people are gonna know that I'm a Christian. I remember doing that growing up and, and for some reason I almost thought that the more that I had bumper stickers that said Jesus on them, or the more that I um, wore a cross puka shell necklace, like I had a, I had a rough time with fashion growing up, or um, that I, that th- the more that I did those things, the more that I could kind of um, punt on the other ideas of what it meant to be Christian, that if people knew from a long way off that I was a Christian, that maybe they wouldn't look too deeply at whether or not I was actually following Jesus. The problem with that is on this most powerful day of Holy Week, Jesus sits with his disciples. We call it Monday Thursday, which is short for the Mandatum Thursday, which is when he says, I got a new command to give you. Jesus kind of changes the game here. And he says, maybe historically religious leaders were known by the big hats that they wore or the big shawls that they had, or even a rabbi back in the day would wear a certain, it's called a zitzit. It's kind of like a a scarf they would wear that would have these certain ribbons. And um, even Hasidic Jews would sometimes wear little boxes on their head that contained the scrolls. They would bind their arms with like leather straps that showed that they were obedient to God's word. These were all the ways to show that you were a follower of God. And Jesus says, there's a new way. There's a new way of thinking from here on out. John chapter 13 says this. Jesus said, the son of man, this is uh, John 13 verse 31. The son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the son in himself and will glorify him at once. So Jesus is saying, the moment, the time has come for me to show you the depth of my glory. I'm gonna go to the cross, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna be raised again from the dead. That will be the big crescendo of my glory. I'm gonna be with you only a little longer. Then you're gonna look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come right now. Verse 34, but I got a new command for you, a new command that I give to you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Now by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. He said, it's, you're gonna want to, because it's easy to have tangible things that say that you're a Christian, right? That's one of the reasons I wear what, what would Jesus do bracelets. I, it's not that I'm really asking myself in every moment, what would Jesus do, as if God just wants me to be um, strictly obedient without my heart being surrendered. But it's that when people, when I walk around, if maybe before I would punt on having a conversation about Jesus, or maybe if someone's in trouble or in trial or in crisis and they see this, they would associate me with the Jesus movement and they would go, hey, would you be willing to talk to me? Would you be willing to pray for me? That's my hope. And so there's all these outside things, but Jesus kind of changes the game and he says, if you really want people to know who I am, the association that I want my church to have from here on out is that you'll be people who love one another. Sure, you can you can have certain festivals, you can be potluck people, you can gather in life groups. These are all extremely important. But I want the calling card of my people to be that they ooze with the powerful, unending, unconditional love that they've been shown in Jesus Christ. It's as if, if we did everything else, this is what 1 Corinthians 13 says, if you can do everything else, if you can speak in the tongues of men and of angels, if you can recite foreign poetry in the Aramaic language of the scriptures, if you know everything there is to know about Revelation and the end times, and you can prophesy about things that are to come, you have everything else going for you. If every other external factor, if every other mental factor would display that you followed Jesus, but you haven't loved, the scripture says, then we are nothing. When, when, when people interact with us as North Coasters, that's us who are Christians, may they not be able to experience anything any more palpable than the undying love of Jesus inside of us that spills out to who they are. 
we must love one another. See you tomorrow.